Bésame, bésame mucho Como si fuera esta noche la última vez Bésame, bésame mucho Que tengo miedo a perderte, perderte Safety first and then entertainment and culture on a equal level, right? Then let's go into the Volksgarten, the garden of the people. All it means people. Garden, it's like the English word for garden. Bundestag. Right? Yes. And it is named Volksgarten because this was the first garden which was given to be, to be used by every person, peasants, workers, normal persons at the beginning of the 19th century. Before this time, no way, no way, no way peasants, workers to go into a garden like this. Nowadays, we are common to have a lot of rights to be able to choose our partner. We don't have to work for free for normal persons. In those times, uh, Peasants, for example, had not so much rights. They had to work for their landowners or global families completely free of charge and unpaid up to five days per week. Then they had to work the land too and they had to pay taxes to them too. This is how it worked in those times. And here you see a very handsome looking, hey, it's, it's for me handsome looking rose garden. You have a lot of different rose plants here. And as you see, we have a lot of dedications. So, for example, to Gilze, and then uh, to Forever of Eden, yeah, Forever Heart of Good Earth. She wants to make a gift to your friends of your, then you can spend 35 euros and you can put this dedication nice. there. It's better than to tell them where they can find this, because when not, uh, you can spend uh, one year to try to find your name here. It's a nice thing, I would say. It's pretty, pretty romantic. At the end, this way you see the dome of the Museum of History of Nature. Yeah, now let's we'll say we. And to the right, you see there are a lot of trains. Another time, see, I told you we are redoing the Parliament of Austria, the House of Parliament. Uh, they told us first uh, it will take about two years, then three, then five. We expect ten. They told us it will finish as well in 2021. We are just hoping and praying every day, of course. <laughs> let's go to the right here. And here you start to see uh, the temple. This is a temple from the classicism era, beginning of the 19th century. This temple was built here. It's dedicated to Theseus. It's a person from the Greek mythology. He uh, was able to, for example, to defeat the Minotaur or the Ken Tower. And it's a good example of classicism architecture. So it looks like an old Greek temple. The interesting thing, and I will show you then the difference between classicism and new classicism. In the classicism era, uh, the people still were still thinking that all those temples from the old Greek were all completely white. They were not. They were completely painted, the most of them. And then just afterwards, in the new classicism era, the time of Franz Joseph, end of the 19th century, mid, end of the 19th century, they already got the information that they, those buildings were completely painted. And you have here a very good comparison between classicism and new classicism. When you turn them to the right, you see the House of Parliament. And when you look through the columns, you see we have a lot of decorations behind. So this is new classicism. New classicism is pretty closer to the original classical era than the original classicism earlier. So it's interesting about art history uh, to have seen this in my point of view, of course. And it's, they choose, for example, the new classes. And this, uh, by walking through this park, uh, of course, uh, when you're visiting Vienna, usually we have always to mention 
a very handsome looking empress, the Empress Elizabeth, better known as CC. She was uh, the wife of Prince Joseph I. Elizabeth was a bit more liberal thinking and she was more open-minded and she was raised up in Bavaria in the south of Germany and she was able to do what she wanted to do, to go hunting, to go making sports. Then she had to marry Franz Joseph, she had to give him children of course because the most important part was to have as much children as possible to be able to continue the dynasty of course. They had together four children, three female and one male. Sure first female died at the age of two. The only male, the Crown Prince Rudolf, committed suicide at the age of had a very, very short brief to... I know. For these day, those <laughs> ladies, they used to uh, lost their consciousness many times and all the time uh, then they were helped to, to be with some salts and all those uh, things. And when she was injured by him, they were first thinking that she was run over. Then she felt sick and they were thinking that she was feel, feeling sick because of this corset. Then the corset was open, opened and then the wand was open too. And then discover, they discovered that she was really bounded by him. And then she died at the age of 61, age and age. And with her death, her myth was started. When she was still alive, she was not popular, not by the Austrians or 100 pounds and she was eating for example just a yolk of an egg with a bit of salt and spices can go and or she let tenderize raw veal and then she let cook the blood and she let add salt and spices in it too so she was always criticizing the court of Habsburg but she was of course taking the money of the right hand corner uh, that we do have a collection of objects connected to the whole world mostly connected to the time of the colonization, of course. And we have in this one the most important and most costly collection of armories, knights armories, I mean, from the Renaissance era, is in that building, more than 200. You can have a look at the Ferraris from the Renaissance era in this building if you want to see them. To the right, then, you see there uh, complex another time in classicism architecture this is the gate of heroes this square is called the gate of it's called the square of heroes held in platz because we do have three monuments dedicated to 180,000 try to count them i will never do this of course i just trust them and we have in this one the venus of willendorf it's the oldest representation of a woman made by the humankind it's a statue big like this which was found in the city of Willendorf in Austria and it's from the Museum of Fine Arts of Vienna. In this we have a very huge collection of paintings from the Gothic era up to the Classicism era. We have their masters of the Italian Renaissance like Raphael, like Titian, like Giorgione, like Bellini, just a few names. Then we do have uh, Caravaggio, Italian Baroque era. The biggest collection of paintings made by Bruegel the Elder is in that museum. Two rooms filled up with Rubens. It's now, it's then Baroque from north of Europe. It's in that museum. We have their Vermeer, Van Dyck, Van Eyck. If you're interested in those things and you will be back in Ben, I can recommend to pay a visit into this museum. About this building behind me, you see then over there a balcony. Over this balcony, a not very friendly guy was standing, Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was standing over this balcony in 1938 after the Anschluss, the annexion of Austria to Germany in 1938 and he was standing over there and about 100,000 persons were here, some of them forced to be here, others who had to be here to be not persecuted and others who wanted to be here. About this part, I told you a third of Vienna was destroyed during World War II, but under my too much. And when I'm talking about this topic, it's not about guilty, it's just about history because we don't have to forget what happened in uh, those times. And it's interesting for you maybe to know why so much buildings from so... So all buildings survived World War II in Vienna. Uh, you see a monument. And the best monument, this is Prince Eugene of Savoy. It's a very important commander of military who was the one who was able to defeat the Ottoman.